Hello everyone, this is MMA Interesting Prospects Podcast. Today our guest is Kwai Thompson, Steel Fist Fight uh, Bantamweight Champion. Uh, hello Kwai, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Uh, I'm good. Uh, in your in your uh, last fight, you defended your your bantamweight uh, title uh, in 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 a, I think that that quite competitive, but also a very good fight. So, if you can tell me, what do you think overall about your performance? Uh, I was kind of disappointed in my performance. I had a really jacked up left hand going through it, and uh, I didn't realize how jacked up it was until I got out of the fight, because I don't know. A lot of fighters, we go through these fight camps with so many injuries, but because we have a fight coming up, we just don't act like it affects us. And so, yeah, I was in the back warming up for that fight. I hit some of my left hands on the pads and instantly pain. And I was just like, well, it's too late. I got to go fight this kid. So just kind of had to bite down my mouthpiece and get after it, I guess. But probably it's like like uh, from your per- perspective also quite impressive that you were able to fight against a very very good uh, like prospect for for fifteen minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know I, because I I think you you always feel a little disappointed when you don't get like a highlight or a spectacular finish. But sometimes you got to keep the perspective and understand that um, that even though. You didn't perform how you wanted. You still had to get it done under extreme ex- uh, circumstances. And that was my thinking. I was like, okay, I, I know I'm injured. I probably should pull out of this fight. But if I pull out of this fight, that just kind of sets precedent that every time I have a big opportunity, I'm not going to like shy away from it just because my hand's jacked up. You know what I mean? It's like if like a big organization or when I turn pro and I have an opportunity like that, I need to be able to perform and get a win regardless of how my body feels or or any other extenuating circumstance comes up if that makes sense uh, and and your opponent uh, he actually uh, fought uh, three times before and submit all, he, all all of his opponents in the in the first round so uh, in the first round when when he caught you in the in the submission attempt did you did you feel that that uh, it can be some some threat for you um, no, honestly, me and my coaches prepared a lot for that. We knew it was coming. And when he had me in the guillotine, then we switched over to triangle. I, if I've, I've trained for it enough and I know exactly what to do to not get caught. And it's, I was fine. It looked bad on like the screen, but like I was just chilling in there. I was just biding my time. Cause you, you gotta, you know what I mean? It's the first round. You're not as sweaty. Things are a little more tight. So I was like, well, let him have it. Let him have it. Just let him waste his grips because, yeah, I was in no danger at all. Uh, and actually, your uh, only only loss uh, came by by like a submission, by submission from from yeah yes from 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 the back. So uh, after 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 th- that fight, did you did you spend more time in the gym just to defend the the like uh, submission attempts when you are on the on the top of your opponent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I definitely put a little more emphasis on understanding where I was in the, those positions, right, when I'm on top of someone. And, I, yeah, I definitely worked for it. I'm, I'm like, like, I definitely put in the time and the hours to say that I was fine. And so like, I did get subs. I got an arm bar last July. I got an arm bar loss last July. And that really bugged me. And so I kind of I decided to change some of my training up, put a lot more emphasis on submission defense and, well, I, I, you saw my last fight. And also in in your last few fights, you, you fought against also a very, very good fighters. And this is the, the, the kind of like a distance, like five minutes, <laughs> like three minutes, the, the round is three minutes and there are five rounds. So do you like this kind of distance that, that there is 15 minutes, but it's like a little bit different that like regular, like pro fight? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of nice because it gives you a little more time to work and you got to have a little more strategy, right? Because we do go by the 10, 10 point must system and MMA scoring. And so, even in my last fight, I knew that I was going to be down like two rounds, the first two rounds. I knew I had to win the next three. And so, you, you, your strategy always changes up depending on who you fight. And so, with him, I was like, oh, he's very dangerous in the first round. Let's see how he is the second, third, fourth, and fifth round. Because he hasn't been to those rounds, so I was like, let's see. 
And so that's like part of my strategy is come out a little more slow, a little more feeling out, and then slowly put on the gas in the later rounds. And but I I like the I like the five round, five round three minutes. It's fun. I I, I think it's fun. And you actually looked very good in like fourth and fifth round in the in the the fights that I have a chance to to watch. So so it's like probably so it is a very good uh, good like distance for you. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it because I, I I love getting in rounds in. I love getting in a lot of rounds. I know some people they spar and they only do like. I know some people show up to the gym. They only do like five rounds of sparring. And that's it. They go home. But I like being in the gym ten. 15, 20 rounds of sparring. It's like so much fun to me. I love it. I love that cardio. I love the the positions it puts you in. I love that part of it. Uh, actually, you you in your last fight you won the belt. You you defended the belt. You are one according to topology, like one of the top top bantamweight in the US as the amateur. So the question is, uh, do you think that this is a point that you will go pro? I think I'm not well. I have some fight news coming up. I'm gonna fight again in September, and I'm gonna fight fight a really tough prospect as well. Dude is five and one, and I'm gonna challenge myself again. I'm gonna get hopefully I'm gonna, God willing, I'm gonna defend the belt again, get another win, and hopefully at the end of the year, or the start of this next year, you'll see me turn pro. But it's all dependent on my coaches, and whatever they want me to do, I'll do it. Cause I don't want to turn pro without the blessing of my coaches. Cause that, yeah, I mean. You gotta have the team behind you. If you don't have the team behind you, it's not worth. This is probably only thing that matters. What you like your your coach think about yeah, it? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But I think it's a lot closer than I think. Uh, and uh, do you have any like additional background? Uh, Outside of MMA, that 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 maybe some wrestling or boxing experience uh, be- before you started MMA training. Yeah, so I wrestled in high school. I wrestled all four years in high school. I wrestled a little bit when I was a kid, but didn't really. Uh, wasn't as um, I wasn't as serious. I just started in high school, finished in high school. After I was done high school wrestling, I never thought I would be in combat sports ever again. I was like, "Well, that's I guess that's done. Like, move on to the next chapter." Then I don't know. I went on an LDS mission. I spent two years out in Fiji, just preaching the gospel as a missionary. Then I came home, and um, one of my one of my good coaches, his family owns the gym that I'm at, and I started. I needed to go to the gym to get back into shape, get back into training, and I just fell in love with boxing. So I have like I have like five or six boxing fights, amateur boxing fights, but MMA is kind of my passion and my love. I was alright at boxing. I love boxing. I was just I had an all right amateur amateur record, but I really love MMA. And so, after I was done boxing, some somebody that I fought before needed a replacement, and on a short notice, and I was like, yeah, I'll fight him. Short notice MMA fight, and that was my first fight. And then ever since, just straight MMA. So overall, it is probably like unexpected because when you when you were was done uh, with the wrestling and th- right now you are like like uh, almost a pro fighter. It's like kind of crazy turns of, of events. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's super crazy because I never thought that I would be, I never thought that I would be doing this or wanting to do this for the life. Like I literally, when I was done wrestling, I literally thought, yeah, that's it. I'm done. My competing days are over. And so that's how I kind of went about it. I was like, well, that's done. Next. But then the the sport just kind of calls you and brings you back to it. And if you can tell me more about the, the gym and and your like uh, coaches and sparring partners that, that you have in your gym. Yeah, so my main head coach is Stanley Poha. He's a boxing boxing guy, pretty famous in the state of Utah. He um Got so much amateur boxing experience. Was really good amateur boxing. His brothers were pro. His dad coached him from the time he was a kid to till he was an adult. Super good boxer. Um, super good coach. I really vibe with him. We 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 got a good chemistry going on, and we understand each other. He's one of those coaches that's like, he doesn't enforce his own style upon you. He works with with what you have, and then adjusts to what you do. And that's something that's super important in fighting and in MMA because all of our bodies and personalities are different. And 
just the yeah, just the creativity that he does and has and he gives me is insane. Then I have my jujitsu coach, guy by the name of Davin Lau. Um he's like a brother to me. He he only coaches me actually. He's he doesn't coach anyone else. Um I'll, he's very creative when it comes to MMA and jujitsu because he's he is a jujitsu guy, but he's not pure jujitsu. And it helps out a ton because in a lot of MMA scenarios, it's not pure jujitsu and it's not pure MMA. It's somewhere in the middle. And he just has like the mind and he's a true fan and super passionate about the sport. And he analyzes all my opponents. And because of him, I felt super comfortable in those submissions because we practiced for that, practiced for the guillotine, practiced for the triangle. I knew exactly what to do. And it was all because of him because how he trained me, what positions he put me in through training camp. All that stuff. He's a super smart guy. Then one of my main, my other main coach, he was actually my wrestling coach in high school. And it's a guy named Nick Lokeni. And now he's my Muay Thai coach. Man, he's super. And one of my main sparring partners, actually. Just this tough, toughest guy. Knows so much about fighting. Been in the gym his whole life. Understands positions. Understands my body. Understands striking. Understands wrestling. And it's just insane, like, the amount of knowledge and experience that he has. And then when all three of them work together, it's like it, it's a thing of beauty. Because all three of their minds, all three of their, their talents and what they all know and what they can give me when they put it all together, it's just without them, man, I would I would suck at fighting. I don't know how to fight without those guys. We definitely can see the results of the, the, the coaching. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. 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 Without those guys, I'm nothing. And those guys are And Nick doesn't train anyone else. He just trains me. And so it's I think it's super important to have that really personal connection. And I've known all those guys for a long time now. And they know me and I know them. And that's how we roll. I like it. I like it like that. Very small team environment. Don't need a big gym. Just need each other. And do you do you also uh, train with with guys like you also the like young prospects that that uh, maybe they are not super known right now but but uh, in few years they can be uh, the the fighters with big name may, maybe in the even in the UFC. Uh, I don't know. Um, a lot of my training partners, a lot of people I spar with and stuff. Some of them are straight Muay Thai guys. Some of them are straight boxers. Some of them are straight Jiu-Jitsu guys. And so I'm not a lot of them are on the MMA path. I know some of them are trying to get on or kind of on, kind of out. You know what I mean? But I think, well, I don't know. There's there's two there's two ways of thinking. Sometimes with just like when you get pure MMA guys, they know a lot about everything. But they never really specialize in one. But then when you get people that are into like a single discipline like boxing, wrestling, jujitsu, or Muay Thai or any of those other sports, they really understand the details of the sport that and why it makes it successful. And so I don't know. I, I kind of like training with the boxers or training with the wrestlers and doing their sport because I get beat up by them, but it helps me get better. I don't know. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Versus yes. like just going with straight MMA guys. I don't know. I yeah. I, I don't really. My team's so small. I don't really train with MMA guys. But I think that it's great that in MMA you have the, the like many approaches to the game. You can be in oh, a yeah. big gym, you can be in a smaller gym, like with 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 a smaller team, with 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 big teams with big names. There are like uh, there are like a lot of options, and uh, like you just need to find like pl pl great place for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many options, so many ways, and there's no real right way to go about it. If that makes sense, it's all it's all personally in, like dependent on you and what you like and what you like training with. And I think that's super cool because some people like big gyms and some people like small gyms, and it, and both work. We've seen guys from big gyms make it to the top, and we've seen guys from small gyms make it to the top. And so I found what works for me now. Maybe I'll have to switch later. Maybe I don't switch at all. It it just depends on. Yeah, I mean, it just depends on how my career goes and what I enjoy doing the most. In your opinion, what is like the the best part of of your MMA game? Oh, man! I... Oh, honestly, this is gonna sound weird, but I like when you have to get creative, like when you're in a weird clinch, or 
you know, like up against the fence or you have to, I don't know. I like, I love my boxing. I love wrestling. Um, my jujitsu is not that good. I like jujitsu. Um, I'll do it jujitsu, but I'm just all right at jujitsu. I haven't really found like a super keen liking to it. So I don't, I don't know. It's just so hard. That's a hard question because I just love the fight and I love how creative you can get in MMA by like, using all the rules from all the other sports and also breaking all the rules in MMA to get a finish. I don't know. I just, I don't know. There's, I love it. I love it all around. I don't know. How, I don't know what the, I don't know what I could emphasize that I like the most. And, and you, you uh, said that, that you will be uh, defending your, your, your bantamweight, uh, your, your title uh, in, in a f few, few, few weeks, let, let's say. Uh, and yes. after this, when you go pro, do you think that you still will fight that, especially the, the first few fights for the still fight, uh, still fist fight, fight night? night? Yes. Well, it, I mean, it, obviously it depends when I go pro, right? Depends on, because then you start making money for it, right? Obviously it's it's still your first fight, so it's not anything life-changing at all, right? And so it just depends on how my career is going, where I want to fight. Who do I need to fight? Yeah, I mean, it completely depends. But I love fighting for Steel Fist. They put on a great show. Their production's fabulous, and uh, uh, that like the the atmosphere of fighting for them is great. I love it over there because it's in it's held in like a concert slash bar or venue, and so it's very intimate. But it's also there's so many people there, and they're all screaming your name and they're cheering for you. It's just a very cool environment. I love fighting for them because like a part like everyone loves fighting, but it's always Ten times better when you have a nice production behind it. If that makes sense. And actually, so we'll they see. actually they uh, upload the the fights quite quickly after the event. So I think that is also important, like for for defense and of course for, for the fighters, because the, there there is uh, because of this there is a chance that more people will will see the fights. Yeah, yeah, more people will see the fights, and they just get known a little bit more. Yeah, you know I mean. And so, I don't know. I, I I just like fighting for them, and they they're in my hometown, so it's always easy to work with them. Always super nice guys, and yeah, they're awesome. I love fighting for them. And overall, who is your your favorite fighter to to watch? Oh man, I got I gotta go with Blessed Express, man. I gotta go with Max Holloway. That guy's the man. Me and him kind of share the same heritage, and I love watching that dude fight. When he when he puts it on people and just how he fights, it's very uh, fan friendly. Not a lot of clinching, a whole lot of striking. So very interesting, very cool how he does what he does. Yes, I think that that everybody loves uh, Max Holloway because it's like hard to hard to say anything uh, like bad about him. He's like oh, he yeah. seems to be a great great guy, of course, great fighter with with like uh, unbelievable skills and will, determination. That uh, like that uh, the, this kind of moments with Justin Gaethje or few mm -hmm. many years ago with Ricardo Lamas when they are standing uh, like yeah, yeah. Uh, in the middle of the cage and uh, they like exchange. Uh, the, the exchange the punches is kind of of crazy thing oh yeah it's it's insane it's like a fighter fighter it's like man that guy wants to swing down and he will and it's like that's cool that's super cool he's like in the fight game to fight i think some people like are in the fight game to win and so like they'll sacrifice like the entertainment show part of it to get the win and don't get me wrong max holly loves winning but like like what he did in the justin gaethje fight where he gave someone that has heavy hands like that a chance to win the fight it's like i don't, I don't know anyone else that would do that so, so i love that so i i think that that you you think that he will beat uh, Ilya Tupuria for for the title he better he better i hope so i got Ilya Ilya has been making me angry a little bit lately it's like i understand you won the belt and you're at the top right but Unfortunately, there's levels to this game, and especially in MMA, it's not enough just to win the belt. Does that make sense? Like, you got to put on, like, I don't know. The fans are so greedy that you have to keep putting on shows for everyone. And he's just, like, he, I, he's super good, and I think he's at a level. But he needs to keep showing us, and he doesn't have the, the resume behind it to talk about it, if that makes sense. 
So I don't know. Who do you who do you got in that fight? Actually, Max Holloway is also my favorite fighter. So, so oh. I, I, I think that that he will beat Ilya. But, but to be honest, that after like like uh, if previous fights of Ilya, I mean. He he's he's crazy good. Also, uh, I actually was uh, quite surprised when he knocked out uh, Volkanovski, uh, and I, I think that be- because of the the chin that Max uh, have uh, has the, that it will be hard to it will be hard to knock him out or submit him, and I think that it will be five round decision f- for Max. But but in the end, I think that is like really interesting, uh, like like clash of styles. Yeah, well, I think so. Here's what I have to say about that. I think, a lot, and I could be completely wrong, and I don't know much, right? But this is from my perspective. So don't quote me on it too hard, and don't give it after me too much. But I think a lot of the times, the American boxing style is working against foreign guys because these foreign guys don't train against it too much. So like Volkanovski and Israel Adesanya, we saw it with Israel and Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland's style is great. but if you know how to box, you know how to kind of beat that style in a way because you see it. You see it a lot more in the gym. You see people trying to Philly shell you. You kind of – obviously, Sean Strickland doesn't have a solid Philly shell, right? It's his own variation. But you understand how to box against him. And I think Ilya has the same thing. He doesn't have a Philly shell style, but he has a super heavy boxing style. And he's always high guard, just stalk, kind of stalks you down and tries to, like, opens up and tries to knock you out. And which is a great style, but I think it really works against guys that don't have a background in boxing. And Volk is a great striker, but he's not a boxer. Um, does that make sense what I'm trying to say? And I think Max has boxed against so many people in his life and knows how to box the American style that I think he'll know how to deal with Ilya's striking. Yes, the the fight uh, Max Holloway against uh, Kelvin uh, Kater was that like mm-hmm. I think that very good example be, because it was all a stand up fight and and he yeah. he won not not only all five rounds but it also was like some some kind of crazy scores uh, scored cards like 50 43 yeah. or even 42 maybe yeah 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 so I I I just I yeah I think Max Holloway knows how to box and so like. It's the same thing. It's like if you go against someone, if you don't know any jujitsu and you go against someone that's a jujitsu fighter, like you're going to lose just because you don't know how to deal with it. And I think Ilya has capitalized on people that are MMA guys, but that don't know how to box. And so I don't know. It's, 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 inter- it's interesting for sure. Yes, yes. Definitely it will be worth, worth to, to watch the fight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm excited yeah. for that one. And and uh, getting back to you, uh, when when you have uh, like few hours to the fight, uh, do you feel any like additional nerves or stress because of the like uh, the 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 like feeling that that you know that you're gonna fight against also a, a very good fighter? Yeah, uh, it depends. It depends for like, it depends on how my training can win. If I have any injuries, I don't know. Sometimes, well, sometimes I feel super nervous. Other times. I don't feel nervous at all. It like it completely depends. My feelings completely go up and down right before a fight, and I it it is what it is. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Sometimes it's, I'm like too nervous. So it's like man, and I I gotta go pee ten times in the back, and I even have to go pee. I just have to. I I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's weird. It's weird. I don't know. And when you are in the cage, like like few seconds uh, before the fight, do you, do you also think? Uh, do you also feel the, the, this kind of like feelings, or you are at that moment like super focused on your opponent that that there is like only you and him? Sometimes it's like, sometimes it moves really quickly that like you don't even like you don't even like register that you're about to fight. Uh, sometimes I have these, these out of body experiences where I'm sitting there looking across the cage from the other guy, and I'm like, "Where am I?" It's like, "Oh, I'm about to fight right now," and I have to wake up and snap out of it. And it just depends. It, it like sometimes I get super nervous, but how Steel Fist does it, they don't do it like the UFC where like you get into the cage and your opponent gets into the cage, and then they have a big announcer of like, "Here's this person in this corner," 
they announce you as you walk out to the cage. So once your opponent, or I usually walk out second now, once I get into the cage and get to my corner, it's like we start like almost immediately. So you don't have those like the extra two minutes of just sitting there in the cage looking across from your opponent. So that's a little bit different as Steel Fist does. So it's not like, yeah, I don't, but even when I do it, it's not. Yeah, it's sometimes just a surreal experience where you're just like, man, what? I'm about to fight. It's like, all right, let's do it. Yes, but it is good that that at one moment you were like, w wake up, uh, and you yeah, know yeah, that yeah. that you will be fighting. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And outside of of sport, do you have uh, like uh, hobbies, uh, especially like af when when you are after after the fight and you have uh, some more free time? Downtown. Do you have uh, yes, yes. Do you have any like hobbies or or passions? Oh, I I love playing rugby. Growing up, I love rugby so much. I'm a little too small to play it as much anymore. Um, I really like being outside, hiking. I live in Utah, and there's so many beautiful mountains and hiking ring, like hiking trails over here. Like I, I went on two hikes yesterday. It was nice. It's just, it's just cool to be outside. I don't know. I, I love that. I'm super into guns too. I love shooting guns and having fun that way. Just, yeah. I don't know. Sometimes it's kind of hard because fighting takes up so much of your life that you kind of forget what it's like to do anything else. But when I don't do fighting, I like doing those things. Uh, okay, um, so many thanks, many thanks for, for the conversation. I'm really looking forward to, to your next bout. And, and after this, I, uh, I think that, uh, that uh, it will be a win, uh, that, that when you go pro, it will be also like inter very interesting, interesting to see you in the like uh, full distance, like, like 15 minutes, but, but yeah, in the, minutes. yes, three yes, but, yes, three rounds. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. I, I think. When fights go longer, it favors me more. So I'm the the more the more time I get in there, the more fun I have. I'm not gonna lie. So.